Clutter might be slowly killing you and you don't even know it. Hello, my name is Robin. If we've never met before, I'm a registered nurse and I love to research how clutter and our environment impacts us, but also to help people to declutter and to create an environment that supports them. So no, it's not like clutter is coming up and clubbing you in the head with a pile of old bills. But I wanna be clear, is that it's very sneaky and clutter can be dangerous for a few reasons. Stress is one of the biggest things that can impact us and our health when it comes to clutter. Have you ever been late for something because you can't find your keys? You tear your house apart only to find them buried under some papers and some clothes? I sure have. There are findings that add to a growing body of evidence that clutter can negatively impact mental well-being, particularly among women. Clutter can also induce a physiological response, including increased levels of cortisol, which is a stress hormone. And our stress levels go up, our adrenal glands secrete that very cortisol. Now I know you might say, well, I have teenagers and they are like causing my hair to turn gray. What about that stress? You know what? That is a bit of a different stress because you generally, that's a short-term stress. It's the constant stress of your environment being around you that really leaves you in more of a steady state of stress. Now, scientists at the Princeton University Neuroscience Institute used fMRI to view how our brains respond to different environments. And it turns out that participants' brains preferred orderly, tidy environments and did not like cluttered environments. Your physical health can be impacted as well by messy homes. Our cortisol levels that rise due to excessive stimuli of too much stuff can cause a lot of health problems. Cortisol also can cause a rise in blood pressure. Now, a lot of people don't recognize why healthcare providers are so concerned about elevated blood pressure. Number one, it puts added stress on your blood vessels and some of those blood vessels are in your brain. It increases your risk of stroke or a different cardiac event happening. It also can affect your kidneys, any kind of small or even large blood vessels are affected and this can actually have like a long-term impact overall. Cortisol also affects our immune systems, which can make us way more susceptible to viral and bacterial infections. So if we want to fight like the things that come out in the winter, the colds and the flus, then it's really helpful to have our stress under control. Remember your immune system also helps combat scary chronic illnesses like cancer. What's more is that when we're stressed, we can make unhealthy choices with food, exercise, drinking, and more, and it adds up. In one recent study, 46% of respondents reported that they ate too much or ate unhealthily due to stress. And 29% reported that they started drinking or increased their drinking, and 16% reported that they started smoking or increased their smoking. Also, weight gain, diabetes, and more can, of course, be affected by these things. Also, accidents can go up from the clutter. We can trip. It's very common for seniors to trip over throw rugs and boxes and things laying around. And a fall for a senior can be catastrophic. I've seen so many people in the emergency room come in who have broken their hips. And quite often it can be a devastating, like life shortening, devastating injury, even like a broken shoulder or wrist can really, really impact your life, especially for those that are older. Another thing, allergies and asthma from dust can be very hard. And even for me, keeping things clean in my house is important because I get ag aggravated even by my beloved cats who I'm allergic to. So it's very important to keep the dust down. So why does clutter do that? In our brains, remember, cluttered home causes a cluttered mind. Have you ever noticed that your living space has a huge effect on your mood? And if you haven't, you are not alone. So many of us do not realize the impact that living amongst cluttered has on our mental state because we're like, I can still get things done. I can still 
tackle my chores. I can still, you know, do whatever. But the thing is, it's actually impacting us. We don't even realize it. Imagine you're walking through your home. It's tidy and clean, but gradually more and more things start getting stuck to you like a magnet. And the more you try to resist, the more stuff gets stuck to you. It's almost like trying to walk through molasses. You get bogged down and that is what is happening in your mind. The clutter can impact our focus. Now in my house, we have ADHD, four out of five of us do. And it the environment has a huge impact on our focus. It can also impact our mood. So we can feel more cranky and we might not even recognize that it is the clutter that is impacting us. And it can also impact our relationships. We can be more snippy with our spouses or our children and that is no good for anybody. And it's worse for women. A 2010 study in the Journal of Personality and Social Psychology looked at dual income married couples living in the Los Angeles area who had at least one school aged child at home. Now, the women in the study who perceived themselves as having a cluttered home or a home that needed work tended to have increased levels of cortisol throughout the day. And those who weren't feeling cluttered, which included most of the men in the study, had cortisol levels that tended to drop during the day because in the morning when we wake up, our cortisol naturally goes up. But then as the day goes on, it's supposed to drop. But if you have increased stress, it's going to stay elevated and you don't want your home causing that stress. But really, what even is clutter? You might be wondering. Clutter can be a collection of random or not disorganized things. Sometimes it is a little bit organized, but clutter can be physical things piled up or scattered around our physical spaces. Even your closets or storage units can be cluttered and that might be impacting you. Maybe not but maybe it is. Or even digital clutter like in your inbox can stretch you out. Honestly, just thinking about it is kind of making me feel bad because mine's getting a little out of control again. Also, unfinished projects really, really can stress us out. There's a thing called nagging unfinished tasks. You've maybe heard me talk about it before, also known as nuts. Those really, really can stress us out and they can really have a big impact on our mental load. So mental load, indecision, and to-do lists can have a huge impact on us. And the clutter in your home can leave you feeling like you've got a chaotic mind. The excess stimuli these items are causing can increase that cortisol. And I'm curious like if this is just me, but have you ever gone to a hotel room and just enjoyed how simple the surroundings are? It's tidy, it's clean, your eyes can rest without seeing a bunch of stuff looking back at you. This is actually what that FMR eye study showed because the human brain can easily get overwhelmed by chaotic environments which causes increased feelings of anxiety and stress. And it's just too much information for our brains to take in. We just don't want it. So Dr. Diane Roberts Stoller discussed in Ecology Today article, the impact that clutter has on the human brain. So Diane explains that visual distraction can cause cognitive overload, which can impair our working memory. Imagine trying to keep all of things, these things in your brain going as you're trying to do things. This is one of the reasons why I actually struggle when I'm decluttering to bring things to their home immediately because I truly will get distracted along the way if I do that because my in, my working memory is not good as a person with ADHD. And it's even harder, even if you do not have ADHD, the more things around your house, it just puts a tax on that working memory. It really can be compared so much to the computer and it can make it harder to focus. And I don't know about you, but I can't focus in my brain if it's feeling stretched, I can also get a little bit grumpy and then I feel bad about myself because usually I have said something to somebody. And this can cause social problems. Sometimes we might feel embarrassed about having people over. I've told the story about my mom and a couple of my aunts dropping over and I was like so grumpy with her because she had not told me because I wanted to clean up first and you know create the illusion that our house was clean but it, it truly, it's just, that's another reason why that can affect our relationships because does, does that, no, that's not what matters, right? So it also then comes full circle to our physical health. Why is it hard? 
My personal theory is that lessons, habits, and generational things, including trauma, they keep our subconscious from allowing us to declutter. Quite often, every time we start, we're like, okay, like I'm annoyed by this situation. Like maybe it's not like life or death feeling to you, but it truly is affecting you. And you're like, I'm gonna do this. But then something in you is like, but what if I need that? Well, mom wouldn't like that, or this was so-and-so's, or all of these things, they weigh us down. And it just creates added stress, which then it's the whole ball of wax. Now, your home is very important for your mental well-being. Home is a special and magical place. It should be for all of us. Walking over that threshold through that door can immediately help you relax and feel calm, can help our blood pressure calm down. And it's so important to create that decluttered home. So check this video here because this is where I actually show you how to declutter your home. And just take little baby steps, baby step by baby step, and you will get there. Because remember, you only live once. And you want your environment to be supporting you. I hope something great happens for you today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.